like. I mean, I don't smoke dope, I don't drink bourbon. All I want to do is shake my turban. Twelve years ago, I moved to Swansea from Birmingham and I helped my father in the clothing business in Swansea Market. Two years ago, I decided to go on my own, you see, and I opened an Indian takeaway where I do also English dishes. And I'm doing great. Yes, what would you like, please? Uh, I want some tikka. Yeah. Two papadams. Two papadams. A uh, portion of bhaji yeah. and two kebab. Can you get well, my wife, Rani, you know, she helps me in my takeaway and she does all the serving, you know. But I do all the cooking. Cooking is one thing I really like doing. And uh, we have Indian dishes and English dishes, you know. But mostly we, sp we specialize in uh, tandoori and onion bhajis. The people uh, really like them, you know. They think they're really tasty, you know. And uh, also my takeaway allows me to do uh, my music it lets me carry on doing shows and gigs, and uh, I enjoy that as well, you know. So uh, the business is not too bad, and they come back for more, and uh, we can carry on, and I like it. But I wish Elvis could taste some of my spicy foods. I'm sure he would love the papadums. You do the Indians, and what we're going to make now is onion bhajis, one of the speciality. Uh, what I'm done with the song about like. Yes. These are the spices that you put in. And What's that are, now? That's the red chili. Yeah. Turmeric. Salt. You don't use a measuring cup or anything, you just use No, you uh, just use the other imagination yes. like <laughs> So onion barges are your speciality pizza, right? That's right. It's got a good variety of uh, old spices in there. And it's very, very popular. And I wrote a song on that one. And it goes something like, well, come on, cats, it's Peter Singh. Do, 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 do. The rock and seat, gonna shake that thing. Punjabi rock is here to stay. Turban jive, it's on its way. A bimdi baji boogie, a papa dum rock. 
A bindi badi boogie, a papa them rock. Bindi badi feeling got me rocking and a reeling. A bindi badi boogie, a papa them rock. And in badges get you so the wind and loo. Cheek to bab and float away the lot of chetty too. Crazy seats are music, cut in the bowl. When the party's over, it's only rock and roll. A bindi badi boogie, a papa them rock. That's the song and that's the onion body. And the embodies get you, so does wind the loop. She kebab and smokes away the lot of chesley too. So here they are, when they're ready, would you like to try one up? Yeah. I'll take one. Yeah. I'll take a bite of one. Of course. Mm, that's lovely, I can taste the spices. Well, that was for the king, because he doesn't hound dog, blue suede shoes and things like that. Well, now you've got this latest guy who thinks he's a king. There'll never be another king, like Shaky Stevens. Well, I've got lyrics for Shaky. Shaky can shake his shoulders, so can Peter sing. He never shake the turban, because I'm the original thing. Look at boy -o. I wasn't born in India in the Punjab, you know. And I was the age of 10 years old when I came to Britain. And uh, I came to Britain with my mother. And my father already was in Britain. He left me at the age of one year old. And when I came down to Britain, it was a rock and roll time, you know. And uh, that time, I couldn't speak English, one word of it. And I went to school. And from school, when I learned English, I went into this rock and roll scene of Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. And when I seen one of his films, I thought to myself, I'll have to do something like that in my community, you know, when I grow up. And at the same time also, there was Cliff Richards. I seen an oh boy. And that also was a great thing, I thought. And he was born in India. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something too, you know. Now, the first record I learned was Living Dull. And then also, I learned an Elvis number, Blue Suede Shoes, which I recorded then in 1982 in Swansea with the help of Paul Clements. I met Peter about 12 years ago when he was working in Swansea Market with his father. They had a clothes shop and uh, my father and his father got friendly and the families got friendly and Peter and myself would go out for a drink in the night to a local pub where there was music, there was an organist there and uh, I remember I used to get up and play and sing a few songs and then they called Peter up. When Peter got up it was totally different, the reaction was great, the crowd loved it. They, they'd never heard a Sikh fella singing rock and roll before. Well, at the beginning, you know, when I go on stage, you know, they said, they look at the guy with a beard and a turban, they said, what, what is he going to do? And all of a sudden you come up, you know, with the Alvis numbers and Cliff Richards and your original stuff. They go potty, they think, this is great, it's a new thing, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to me. Uh, truly, I can't believe I'm doing this thing, you know. It's great, and I hope it will carry on like that. Peter realized then that he had a lot more to give than working in Swansea Market, and we got talking, and I suggested that he might care to finance his own single, which he did, and he cut uh, Living Doll and Blue Suede Shoes. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show. Three to get a ring now, go, 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 go. Step on Blue Suede Shoes. Slaying my name all over the place Do anything that you want to do But up all my lay off and shoes And don't you Stand my blue suede shoes You do anything to lay off my blue suede shoes But it's a blue, blue, blue suede shoes Blue, blue, blue suede shoes Blue, blue, blue suede shoes, baby Blue, blue, blue suede shoes But you do anything to lay off Blue suede shoes and living dog got me cuttings all over the place. After that, Martin Ace and Paul Durden, who's my manager, came into my life, took me to London. We'd done a show in Kentish Town. And with the help of Martin Ace, he came out with Rocky with a Sikh, purely my life story, which I could never believe could happen to a Sikh like that, which is bringing me greatness in my community. Up there already. Great stuff, and there's me and you there. 
You've written quite a few songs for him, haven't you? Well, the odd one or two, yes. Um, do you want me to tell you about him? Yes, go on then. Uh, well, Turbans Over Memphis is one of the very famous ones. Um, even though it hasn't actually been released as a record, uh, it's the very title, you know, sort of, uh, is, uh, you know, is responsible for its fame. And uh, that just came out of a conversation that Paul and I were having. And, um, and we just wrote the song, Turbans Over Memphis. And then we did uh, Elvis, I'm on the phone, which is a, a surrealist piece, uh, which involves Peter trying to uh, contact Elvis and tell him that he's on the telephone. And you know, he wanted to give him his number. In fact, I don't think his number's in the song. But, uh, well, whether or not Elvis has contacted Peter, I think he does occasionally. And, um, you know, from the other side. And, uh, yeah, we did that one. Um, we recorded those two songs in London at, uh, at Nick Lowe's recording studio. And, uh, and Rockin' with the Seek, we did that one there as well, which was released as a single. I don't smoke dope, I don't drink bourbon, all I do is shake the turban. I was living in the punch of midnight, two feet, but baby didn't want to rock and roll. I travel the world, I'm looking for the red man. I ended up in the United Kingdom. The only thing I have, you want to do what? Show the world a six car rock and roll to rock. Rock and wait to see the 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 only thing I have, you want to do what? Show the world a six car rock and roll to rock. I was working in the market with the rest of the cats Selling people clothes and selling hats I'm talking to the chicks all through the day They never had something to say They all say I have They wanted to do what to Show the world that seeks a rock and roll to Rock it, can I score? Well, I'm a rocking cat with a new family. I don't smoke dope, I don't drink bourbon. All I want to do is shake my turban. The only thing I have, what did you do was show the world a six car rock and roll to. Show the world a six car rock and roll to. Show the world a six car rock and roll to. Hey, yeah. thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. songs like Rocking with a Sikh, don't you think that the lyrics are just a little too gimmicky and that you're pushing his turbaned image too far? How dare you? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, we use uh, everything at our disposal to, to write a song, and uh, all songwriters do this. And if you've got a chap who's wearing a turban, he's Indian, he sings like Elvis Presley, then that is obviously going to be, you know, create a situation where, you know, you're geared to writing in that kind of a way. Um, with a song like uh, Turbans Over Memphis, I mean, you couldn't write a song like that for Marty Wilde or somebody because he doesn't wear a turban. Um, but uh, with Peter, I mean, it's, uh, it's just interesting that we, you know, we can sort of do that. And I mean, some of the humor uh, comes across um, because of that. Um, some of Peter's own songs, in fact, are far more gimmicky, like Bindi Bargy Boogie and um, Pick Your Turbans on a Saturday night. Um, no, the, the songs that Paul and I have written are not uh, gimmicky in that sense, except in the way that all pop songs are gimmicky to a certain extent, yeah. Some Sikhs have criticised you for making fun of your own religion. Well, you see, at the beginning, you know, it was like a sort of a criticism, you know, but now they take it serious. I think it's a very good thing I'm doing, you know. Do you think he's mocking Sikhism? No, on the contrary, I think he's promoting Sikhism. When you look at the fundamentals of Sikhism, the Guru Granth Sahib, the Holy Bible of Sikhs, embodies writings from different philosophers of different denominations, uh, are written in musical notations called ragas. In one of the quotations from the Guru Granth Sahib, it states that 
to dance and enjoy is, is an is a, uh, internal requirement of the mind. And Nanak says that only those who have the qualities enjoy it. Peter Singh has those qualities. Now, music is, is a medium by which Sikhism is promoted in Gurdwaras. Uh, musical aspect of Sikhism, this is the most important uh, factor that through which we get audiences together. So music is basically part and parcel of Sikh's life. <laughs> Family life is very important to me. I got the wife, I got four boys, one daughter, but unfortunately I had a tragedy after a few years ago when I lost my son, 13 years old. He was a great lover of rock and roll as well. Well, I had to stop for two years, and then the, the Swansea people also turned around and said, Pete, you must carry on. If you don't do it for you, you have to do it for Sukhwinder Singh, we told your son, because he used to like it. And that's it, I got demand for it, and I had to carry on, so I'm gonna carry on for that sake. Come on, Ed. Oh, dear, dear. Everybody's kicking the ball, come on. The family thinks uh, this rock and roll I'm doing is a good idea, but now I got my children following Michael Jackson, so I've done rock and roll. They're gonna carry on with the new thing, the new craze, the body popping or the body upping. So there we are, that's how it goes. We like uh, body popping, Michael Jackson. We're into old jazz funk kind of music. We, my dad does rock and roll, but it's not our type of music. Like, we like something a bit more funkier. Welcome back to the program. Peter Singh, the rocking Sikh, is with us in the studio. Now, we spoke earlier on, Peter, about you starting off in the music business. Now then, tell me about the night that you heard that Elvis Presley had died. I mean, most people can remember that night. What are your memories of, of hearing the bad news? I went to the market uh, to work in the morning, you know, and as I was opening the stall, the next door neighbor to me came up and says, uh, Peter, I want to say a couple of words to you. So uh, when I went up, she says, uh, you won't believe this because it's going to be heartache for you. That Elvis, the king, legend, history, is dead. And that just stunned me. I, I didn't know what to say, like, you know. Even after nine years, I still can't believe he's dead, you know. Memories like Elvis will live forever. So the legend lives on then. Now, you yourself, of course, uh, are, a, are a Sikh, an Indian Sikh. I mean, what does your family think to you uh, performing in this way, shaking your hips and gyrating like the king? Well, at the beginning, you know, they thought, uh, you know, can he really do it? But once I started to the clubs and the pubs, I proved, now they're very proud of it. They really think it's great. He always wanted to do it, you know, rock and roll, and he can do it like I let him as I go and then and he, as long as he's happy, and uh, he wanted to do it. You hope he'll be successful? Yes, I hope so. Anyway, I wish him luck, like. One of the important aspects of Peter Singh being taken more than just the latest hype is the fact that he's got a great band behind him. I mean, Peter Singh is essentially a South Wales phenomenon as much as anything. His band are exactly that. I mean, Man, were probably one of the most famous bands ever to come out of Wales. Um, Pugwash Weathers, the drummer, used before being in Man, was actually in Gentle Giant and also played with uh, 
Graham Bond, who's now dead, unfortunately. And he's, he's obviously, you know, part of a great back line. Mickey Jones is the guy who actually has been in every uh, man lineup since they first started. In fact, the bystanders even back in the 60s. Great slide guitarist and uh, vocalist. Uh, moving on to Martin Ace. Martin used to be in uh, countless man lineups, Help Yourself, Reckless Eric, The Motors, etc., etc. Um, and it has to be said that without Martin, there couldn't be Peter Singh, I, I feel, anyway, and, and vice versa, because the two work off each other both on and off stage. <laughs> On the rock spectrum, where would you personally place Peter Singh? Um, well, in just pure musical terms, he's just an out-and-out -out rock and roller. I mean, he's not actually pushing back any musical barriers. Um, if you look at the history of rock, you've got people like, you know, Boy George, who couldn't be categorised for quite a while. In terms of the music itself, you've got people like Shaking Stevens from Cardiff, who played for ten years and then finally made it. So, Peter Singh is, is a mixture of the two, really, the phenomenon and also just the, the straight rock and roller. Well, they take me as a novelty at the beginning, but now they're thinking I'm going a bit serious, you know, and uh, I'm going to prove that in future as well. I, I want to go very seriously because, well, I started with, like, a, a comedy sort of thing with a Bindi Baji Boogie, but I'm, I'm hoping to do a nice ballad now, which will be very serious, and I think they'll gratefully like it, like, you know? Rocking with a Sikh is my uh, life story, but it's also, you know, it's a rockabilly number, like, I mean, you get it, like, you know, well, you've heard about Elvis, you've heard about Cliff, well, I'm the rocking cat with a new kind of riff, and uh, it's something unique, like, and with Turbans over Memphis, it would be great, you know, with the lyrics, like, you know, I changed my sitar for this guitar to set out for Tennessee because I want to see turbans over Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Followed by Elvis, I'm on the phone. Cables crossed, promised land, shadowed by God's right hand. Good old boys at home, they don't know I've got a telephone. But Elvis, you know I've got a phone now. Elvis, I've got a phone. Elvis, I got a phone. Oh, yeah. Connect me, Elvis. Uh -huh. I got a phone. Oh, yeah. Elvis, uh -huh. I got a phone. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Peter Singh concerts attract a plethora of people, a mixture of Elvis fans, just rock and roll fans, and obviously Sikhs. Uh, that, that mixture manifests itself in, in, uh, in as much as uh, a whole, a whole, uh, whole audience would just see this phenomenon called Peter Singh, uh, and the first reaction is wonderment, then perhaps amazement, but ultimately just enthusiasm. Well, what other ambitions have you got left in life now, Peter? Well, first of all, you know, one ambition is that I like to enter for the Eurovision Song Contest for South Wales, you know, which will be a great thing because I live in Wales. And uh, all the next one is that I like to visit Graceland's to pay the respect to the king, you know. And I like to tour America and also the Punjab to show that truly that I got feelings for the Punjab and Wales and also America where the king is, you know. That's one of my ambitions, and I like to hit the charts 
that was the greatest thing. Well, I've achieved a bit. I like to go forward in my life. Ten.